everyone, welcome to your circuit pulse and Tabata class focus is going to be upper body. I posted a couple workouts using this format back at the start of quarantine when we did that week of workouts. So this might look familiar. It's also very similar to my circuit and Tabata classes. This class is broken up into two strength circuits and then we finish with a quick Tabata blast. In each of the two circuits, I'm gonna give you five exercises. You go through them using a structure of 30 seconds in the full range motion, followed immediately by 15 seconds of pulsing in that exercise. You then rest for 15 seconds before you move on to the next exercise in the circuit. When you complete the circuit, you get 30 seconds to recover and we're gonna complete three sets total of the circuit. For the Tabata, I'm gonna give you two exercises and you alternate between them using an interval structure of 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest. You do that straight for four minutes. In between each of the chunks, in between the two circuits and the Tabata, you're gonna get a full minute to recover. And during that time, I will show you a preview of the upcoming exercises. So we're not gonna add in any jumping until we get to that Tabata at the end. And even then it's minimal. I will demonstrate how to modify if you wanna keep the whole class completely low impact. Now for equipment, you're going to need a set of medium weights. For one of the exercises, we will just drop down to a single weight though. So what I'm gonna do is I have a set of eight pound weights. I'm gonna use those for the majority of the class. Then I have a slightly heavier single 10 pound weight that I'm gonna to switch to for one of the exercises. So if you do have multiple sets of dumbbells on hand, have some within your medium range so you can switch as needed. But if you only have one, a single medium set will do. We're gonna start class with a guided warm up. If you're already warmed up though, I always put times in the video description so that you can click it and jump right to the start of the workout. That being said, warming up is so important. So if you have not warmed up on your own, you better go through the guided warm up with me, okay? And then we will finish class with a quick guided cool down. No equipment needed for our warm up. Let's get right into it and let's actually start kneeling. So we're gonna come down onto the mat. If it's uncomfortable to kneel, you could sit in a cross-legged position as well. I want us to start with some deep diaphragmatic breathing, especially if we're sitting a lot during the day, our breath sometimes gets, tends to get caught up in our shoulders and then we hold a lot of tension up here. So I think it's really important that we start by establishing a proper breathing pattern where we can activate the transverse abdominis. All right, so in a kneeling position, let's start. We're gonna inhale through the nose. And as you do, I want you to make sure you're expanding through the rib cage east to west. So it's not shoulders up on the inhale, it's rib cage expands wide. You're gonna exhale out through the mouth like you're blowing out a birthday candle. Ribs move gently in and down, engage the transverse abdominis, gentle lift through the pelvic floor. Let's do that twice more, deep inhale. Exhale. One more time, inhale. Slow exhale. And now bringing your hands out to the side, I want you to just start wiggling through the fingers. So kind of like picture you're at a ballpark and you're doing the wave, one finger at a time, rolls down and extends open. Do that a couple times. We're gonna be gripping weights for a lot of this workout, so it's just nice to move through the hands a little bit. Now, this might be a little harder. I want you to switch the direction of the wave. So if you were leading with your pinky fingers, now I want you to lead with the thumbs, go the other way. <sighs> might feel a little weird, maybe not as intuitive. Twice more. And now reach those arms out to the side. We're gonna twist over to the right. And then from here, I want you to bring that left hand to the outside of your right knee and staying in the twist, sitting up nice and tall, just start to trace arm circles with that back right arm. I'm gonna bend my elbows so that I don't hit the couch, but you could do it with your arms straight if you have space. So just mobilizing through that shoulder joint. Switch direction of the circles. Two more. Reach those arms out straight, come back through center, and now let's twist over to the left. Right hand comes to the outside of that left knee, trace arm circles with that back left arm. Think about creating length through the spine as if you could increase the space between your vertebrae so we're not compressing down in this twist. Switch direction of the circles. We're gonna spend a lot of time throughout this workout working to stabilize in a neutral spine. So it feels really good to twist it out in the warm up. We'll do it in the cool down as well. 
All right, arms straight out, come through center. And then let's lift all the way up onto our knees, arms overhead. I'm gonna turn to the side so you have a better view. We're gonna do a little hip hinge combo. So you're gonna hinge the hips back. As you do, your arms sweep back, open up through the chest. Give me a tricep kick back here, bend the elbows, hands come forward, press them back. Now we're gonna come up tall to that kneeling position and then give me another tricep dips. You're gonna bend the elbows, flip your palms like you're patting yourself on the back and then straighten those arms back up. So keep that going at your own pace. Hip hinge, kick back, come upright, bend the elbows again. So opening up through the backs of the arms here. We'll do some exercises in a hinge position as well. So I wanted to include it in the warm up. Twice more. Last time. Hands to the mat, let's come to a tabletop position. Now really spread out through your fingers, shoulders over wrists, knees under hips. I want you to tuck the toes under and lift your knees to a one inch hover so that you're in a bare plank position. So we're gonna activate through the core here, but we also wanna activate the serratus muscle, muscles. So to do that, we're gonna start to retract and protract through the shoulder blades. Now your spine is not changing shape. It's just your shoulder blades gliding in towards each other and wide. Three more. Last time. And now one at a time, I want you to step your legs back into a plank position. From here, we're gonna come into a hip slide. So you're gonna bend the knees, hip slide back, and then you're gonna squeeze the quads, shoot yourself forward back into that plank. Once you have the motion, you can add in a little bit of speed, nothing crazy, but let's build some warmth in the body. Two more. Last time. Hips up, downward facing dog. Walk your hands in towards your feet, coming into a forward fold, and then walk those hands right back out into your plank position. Let's do a second and final set of those hip slides. Bend the knees, hip slide back and forward. Three more. Last time. Hips up, downward facing dog. Hands walk in towards your feet. This time I want you to roll up slowly, vertebrae by vertebrae. Stack the spine up tall. And I'm gonna show you a preview of our first circuit. First exercise is going to be a hammer curl and then a curl to a front extension. So a little biceps combo. The pulse in that one is going to be in the hammer curl. From there, we're gonna come into a kneeling position. We're gonna isolate one arm in a concentration curl. For that one, I'm gonna to switch to my slightly heavier weight. Now, if kneeling on the ground doesn't work for you, you can do that one seated. You would hinge forward and you would do the curl like that. We then just switch over to the other arm. From there, you're going to grab both your mediums again and we're gonna go into a tricep kickback in a hinged position. Again, if kneeling doesn't work for you, you can come up to stand for that one and do it from your feet. The pulse is going to be with arms straight and you'll lower and lift them. Final exercise is body weight. It's gonna be in a reverse tabletop position. To start, it's a little combo, tricep dip, and then we ship those hips up into a bridge position. The pulses, it's just gonna be that little tricep dip. 30 seconds full range, 15 seconds pulses, 15 seconds rest, we're gonna go through it three times. Let's go. So I'm starting with my eight pound weights. Palms are gonna face in towards each other. Forearms stay parallel. It's gonna be that hammer curl and then the hammer curl with that extension forward. Neutral pelvis, core in tight, curl, curl and extend the arms forward. I'm gonna show you from the side. Curl. Now I want you to notice when you do that front extension is your body rocking back and forward. You don't want it to. So the only muscle group moving or body part moving, I should say, the arms. Try to stabilize through the rest of the body. We'll hold in the hammer curl coming up and pulse. All right, hold that hammer curl elbows at 90, pulsing up and down. All right, we're gonna drop down to one weight. If you wanna go a little heavier, you can. Weight is gonna be in your right hand, so right foot will be forward in your lunge position. You're gonna hinge forward from the torso, but don't collapse through the upper body. So your arm is on the inside of that thigh, and it's going to be a bicep curl. So 
So in that previous hammer curl, the thumbs were pointing up to the ceiling. Now it's the palms. Ooh, maybe I didn't need to go up to a heavier weight. <laughs> Could have stuck with that eight. Pulses will be at the halfway point. All right, so find about 90 degrees and it's a little pulse. Oh, 15 seconds stress, we'll switch it over to the other side. So weight is gonna go into your left hand. You can find that split lunge position. I'm doing it in kind of an open split lunge to give you guys a better view. Hinge forward at the hips, long neutral spine. Curl. Now your arm is pressing against your thigh, but it's pressing against the inside of the thigh. You're not resting your elbow on top of it, okay? It's on the inside. All right, find that halfway point. It's a little pulse. Huh. All right, we're gonna go back to both weights. We have tricep kickbacks. So shifting the focus from biceps to the backs of the arms. I'm gonna do this in a kneeling hinge position. You could also opt to stand. Palms face in towards the sides of your body. Elbows are behind you and they stay lifted. And then we are just going to kick back and then bend. So same thing I was talking about when we were doing that front extension. Are you rocking your body as you do this? Try not to, okay? So we need to stabilize through the core, just those forearms, straighten and come forward. So take out the momentum. The pulse here, the arms will be straight and we'll lift and lower them. Hold those arms straight. You're going to drop them a few inches, lift them a few inches. Lower, exhale. Oh, rest. All right, ditch the weights. Body weight exercise to finish. We're coming into that reverse tabletop position. Fingers point forward. Press the floor away. You're brought across those collarbones. Plant your feet on the mat a couple inches in front of your knees, and then you're going to lift the hips up to a little hover, a combo to start. So tricep dip, and then hips lift into that reverse tabletop, lower them to your hover. One dip, one lift. So it's upper body strength, but this is also challenging upper body mobility. Can you stay open across your chest? It's gonna be really tough if you have tight shoulders or you tend to be a little rounded forward, which most of us are after a long day of sitting at our desk. All right, now it's just those little dips. Bum is hovering, but if you need to modify, you can place your bum on the mat and do the tricep dips from there. And rest. Okay, you have 30 seconds to recover. First round is done. We're gonna go through that twice more. So we start with that hammer curl and then that curl to the extension. Thumbs are gonna point up towards the ceiling the whole time. Unlock your knees, neutral pelvis, abdominals are engaged. Curl, curl about three quarters of the way, punch those arms forward. Curl, curl, press forward. Now, if you're feeling yourself sinking into your low back, try staggering your feet. That can also help if you cannot prevent yourself from rocking forward and back, acting like a little kickstand. All right, hold 90 degrees, little pulses. 15 seconds here. Not letting yourself flare out through the rib cage. And rest. 
We'll come into that concentration curl. Option to use your heavier weight. Either way, drop down to one. Right hand has the weight. Right foot is forward in your open lunge position. And then you have to hinge forward at the torso because I want that elbow on the inside of your thigh. Exhale, curl. All right, now we're gonna hold at the halfway point and it's that little pulse, 15 seconds. This is my weaker side, so I am struggling. We got this. Rest, switch it over to the other side, same exercise. Weight in your left hand, left foot is forward. Break at the hips, hinge forward, but long spine stay open across your chest so we're not hunching, okay? Like I mentioned in the warm up, basically all of this workout is using our core to stabilize the spine at neutral. Check in, make sure you're not cheating so the elbow isn't resting on top of your thigh, it's on the inside of it. So you can push into each other from the side. All right, hold at that halfway point, we pulse. If ever the pulse is too much, I want you to stay in full range of motion for the whole 45 seconds, okay? It's a great way to modify. Rest. Okay, back to two weights, tricep kickbacks. You can be kneeling in a hinge position or you can stand. You could also do it in a lunge position if you wanna have one foot forward, okay? Find what works best for you as long as your torso is hinged, reaching the hips back. You're good. Again, take out momentum. So that means a split second pause when your arms are straight before bringing them forward. So you're not just swinging the weights forward and back. Hold the arms straight, lower and lift. Gaze is at the front edge of your mat so your neck stays long, rest. All right, body weight up next. Spread out through the hands as best you can. Push the mat away, open across the chest, but then engage through your rib cage so that your abdominals are still connected and we're not just puffing open. Ground down through the feet, hips are at a little hover. It's one tricep dip, and then hips lift up into that reverse tabletop and lower down. Now when I lift my hips up, my gaze isn't up at the ceiling. Notice I'm still looking forward slightly. Okay, just the pulses to finish. So hips stay at a hover, little bend and press. Elbows are going straight back. And rest. Okay, 30 seconds to recover. We're gonna go through that one final time. Final time through this circuit, coming up, grab your two weights. We'll start with that hammer curl to the hammer curl with that extension or that serve the platter, it's sometimes called. Hammer curl, curl, extend. We're checking in and just noticing, are we rocking back and forth as we do this? Slow it down, stabilize through the core, ground down through your feet. So it's important when you go into the extension, only curl up about three quarters of the way. If you curl all the way up to the shoulders, it'll be a shoulder press instead of going forward. 
All right, we have that pulse, find 90. Rest, drop down to your single weight, concentration curls coming up, you come into that kind of staggered lunge position. Hinge at the hips, but keep your spine long. I'm gonna start on my right arm. Palm faces up to the ceiling. Now, if you notice yourself sinking into your low back, sometimes I like to keep my hand on my abdomen just for that tactile cue to kind of remind myself. Brace through the core as I curl. And you do that by sinking it with your exhale. Hold at 90 little pulses. Oh. Done. <laughs> that arm was not having it. Okay, other side. Mirroring me, left hand now has the weight. Hinge forward. Let's go. Pulse. Rest. Back to two weights, tricep work coming up. So find that hinged position, slide your hips back, palms facing towards each other, Row those elbows back and then keep them back. Gaze at the front corner of your mat. So don't look up and crane the neck. I notice myself rocking forward and back a little bit. Gentle engagement through your glutes to help stabilize. Hold the arm straight, lower and left. Rest. Okay, ditch those weights, body weight exercise to finish. Spread out through your fingers. Open up across the chest. Now one thing guys, make sure that your shoulders are over the wrists. Sometimes I catch myself doing is bringing my shoulders forward. Look at how drastic of a bend that brings my wrist into, okay? That's a little much. So make sure shoulders are staying back right over them and it's gonna feel better on your wrists. Okay, hopefully you started moving when you heard the beeps. <laughs> One tricep dip, <sighs> hips lift and lower. Okay, hips out of hover, just the tricep dip. And done, awesome job. You have a minute to recover. I'm gonna show you what's coming up in our second circuit. Circuit number two, first exercise is going to be a shoulder sweep. So kind of like you're making a snow angel with the shoulder press at the top, bending the elbows to goalpost and pressing back up. The pulse there will be in goalpost up an inch, down an inch. From there, we continue our work on the shoulders. It is going to be a shoulder shaper with a little press up when those forearms are close towards each other. The pulse is going to be with the forearms together up and down. We then come into a hinged position for a row combo. So it is going to be a row with the palms facing in towards each other. 
And then you're gonna flip the palms towards your thighs and give me a wide row. From there, we ditch the weights and make our way down to the mat. First up, we have a push up, and your feet are gonna be wide. So you do one push up, and then you lift the hips up, bringing opposite hand towards opposite foot. The pulses are going to be in a low push up position. Final exercise, we lower down to our stomachs in a prone position. To start is gonna be a lift of the upper body, the arms are extended. And then for the pulses, we hold at the top and you're just going to flutter your hands like a swimmer. So you're gonna grab your weights. And these first two exercises, because we're doing overhead stuff, you might find that you wanna go a little lighter, okay? Palms face forward to start. It's going to be that kind of snow angel motion with a press at the top. So you're gonna sweep those arms in a big circle up overhead. And then at the top, bend the elbows down to goal post. Press them back up overhead with control, lower them back down. Circle it up. One shoulder press at the top and circle it down. If you're sinking into your low back, try that staggered foot stance. You'd bring one behind you, kind of like a kickstand. The pulses here will be in that goal post position. So find goal posts, up an inch, up an inch. Slow it down a little bit so you're not just bouncing. And to modify, you can alternate, right? and then left. 15 seconds to rest, lower those arms. So you have a shoulder press with that press up coming up next. I'm gonna keep the staggered stance for this one. Neutral pelvis, nice and tall, don't lose connection to your rib cage. Let's go. So from that goal post position, you squeeze the forearms and palms face each other. Press up a couple inches and down, and then you're just gonna open them back up. The press up doesn't need to be huge because what I don't want your elbows to be out here when you do it, okay? Really squeeze them in towards each other. The final 15 seconds are gonna stink. <laughs> it's just gonna be that little pulse up and down. It's gonna be hard, but we got it. Okay, hold them in, little pulse up and down. Don't flare open through your ribs or you're gonna sink into your low back. I don't care how big it is, it can be one inch up and down. In fact, it's a pulse, so that's really all it needs to be. Oh, rest. All right, we're gonna come into a hinge position for that row combo up next. So hinge your hips back, palms face in towards each other to start, row the elbows back and lower. And now rotate the palms in towards you and it's a wide row. Rotate narrow, rotate wide. Now, especially when you do that narrow row, make sure you're not rolling forward with your shoulders. So think about drawing the elbows back and up. The pulses, your choice. You can pulse in the narrow row or the wide row. I'm gonna pulse wide since that's where I am. Think about that retraction, protraction we did in the warm up. Shoulder blades slide gently in towards each other. This movement originates with your back muscles, not the elbows. Rest. All right, put the weights aside. We're gonna make our way down to the mat. Wide stance, push up. So your feet can be as wide as the mat. We'll do a push up and then you'll bring opposite hand towards opposite foot, just alternating side to side. All right, let's do it. One push up, hips lift up. Opposite hand towards opposite foot. One push up, other side. So your legs are really active in the push up. Think of squeezing your quads as if you could lift them off your kneecaps. Now, when we pulse in that low push up, I'm going to drop to my knees. All right, knees down to the mat. You find about the halfway point of your push up, and it's a little pulse up and down. Woo, rest. We're gonna come down to our stomach up next. Now I'm gonna keep my legs down on the mat for this one so you can really press the tops of your feet into the mat. I'm gonna have my legs at about hips distance apart. Arms are gonna reach forward, nose is just hovering over the mat. Whole upper body will lift. Lift up to a long low hover, and then just lower back down. Now, if you are feeling all the pressure of this one in your low back, I want you to try exhaling as you lift up. 
so that you can really connect to the abdominals and you're not just pressing the stomach down into the mat. The lift is really coming from your mid-back area, so like right under your shoulder blades. Get ready to hold at the top. Hold at the top, reach those arms out, and you're just gonna flutter them. Now your gaze is just ahead of you a few inches. You're not craning the neck. This is not a super high shape, it's a long one. Uh, rest, maybe press back for a quick child's pose, just to get that flexion after being in that extension position. First time through the circuit, complete. Twice more to go. Ow! God, that plant's sharp. <laughs> so we'll grab our weights. We'll start from the top, do a little check-in. Maybe you need to drop down a little bit. Maybe you're not feeling challenged enough, in which case grab a slightly heavier set. Palms face forward, we have that sweep with the shoulder press at the top. Big circle at the top, drop and press up. All right, pulse, you are in that goal post position, up and down. Elbows are wide, but you can still kind of see your hands in your peripheral vision. If it's too wide, you're gonna flare open through the ribs. Rest, let those arms down by your side because we will have them lifted the whole 45 seconds up next. Shoulder shaper with that pressed together in front of your face. Okay, let's go. From goal post, squeeze the forearms in towards each other, palms face in. Press up and down, open up. I'll show you from the side, give you a different angle. So it's shoulders, but your biceps are still working a lot in these first two. Okay, just the press up. Weights are touching. Don't let your elbows separate too wide. They're not wider than shoulders distance apart. Ideally, they're a little narrower than your shoulders. Rest. Oh my gosh, that one's so hard. Okay, we have that row combo coming up. Row narrow, row wide. Find the hinge position, reach your tailbone long. Narrow row, wide row. So you might find you don't get the elbows up as high in the wide row as in the narrow row. Narrow row is so hard to say. <laughs> Tongue twister. That's normal, okay? I'm not really going for height on these. Really think about initiating the motion with that retraction of your shoulder blades. Pulse, your choice, narrow or wide. I'm just gonna do narrow since that's where I am. Shoulder blades, retract, release a little. Retract, release. Rest. Weights go away. Two body weight exercises to finish. Wide push up. Well, wide with the feet. Hands are normal, shoulder distance apart. One push up, opposite hand to opposite foot. And you can modify by dropping to your knees for the push ups the whole time. Woo, which I very well may need to do when we get to our third round. Elbows go back at a 45 degree angle. All right, we have those pulses. I'm gonna to come to my knees for them. Squeeze through the glutes and quads. You wanna stay open through that hip joint so you can maintain a neutral spine. So squeezing the glutes will help with that. Little pulse down and up, rest. All right, we come into that prone position up next. Arms reach forward. Find neutral through your pelvis, okay? So don't go into it with an arch in your back. 
well, you can have a slight arch, but not an excessive one. Inhale, whole upper body lifts to a long, low hover and lower. It's a small movement, but when you do it correctly, it is tough. If it's too much, I want you to do it with your elbows back in a goal post position, okay? That'll shorten the lever and make it a little more manageable. It's harder with the arms overhead. Now you hold at the top and it's that little flutter. Hands go up and down, passing each other. Rest, 30 seconds. Maybe take a quick child's pose or a shell stretch it's called in Pilates because you really maintain this flexion and engage your abs, which feels good after being in an extended position. All right, last time through. Let's grab our weights. We're gonna start with those two overhead exercises. Palms face forward. We'll start with the sweep with the shoulder press at the top. Bend, press, circle it down, circle it back up. Check in, can you see your hands in your peripheral vision? Should be able to. Hold at the top for the pulses, goal post position. Notice if you're leaning back and swaying into your low back, try this staggered position, okay? I just caught myself doing it. Rest. Shoulder shaper with the press up coming up. Hardest move in the series, if you ask me. Let's go. Close in front of you, press up and down. Open, ooh, I gotta take that staggered stance. Okay, pulses, 15 seconds. You don't have to do this again after this. We got it. Don't lean back, okay? If you lean back, you're gonna sink into your low back. So it's just the ever so slightest, smallest lean forward into it, rest. Row combo. I'll do it facing forward this time to give you guys a different angle. Hips hinge back, reach your tailbone long. And let's go. We row narrow, we rotate, and row wide. So I want you to think about your neck when you're doing this. Is it moving? Is it jutting forward as the elbows pull back? I want you to think of maintaining the sh same shape of your spine throughout the entire exercise. So that doesn't change, it's just the arms moving. The shoulder blades slide in, but that doesn't cause the neck to, neck to jut forward. Pulse, your pick, I'm gonna do narrow. And again, don't think about getting your elbows up as high as possible. If we go too high with the elbows, what tends to happen is the shoulders roll forward. So I'd rather you stay really open across your chest and instead just really think of that small motion of the shoulder blades retracting in, ditch the weights. Push-ups coming up. Let's go. If you're tight through the back of your legs, don't worry about actually touching your foot. Maybe your hand just comes to your shin. That's where it comes for me. My push-ups are getting a little sloppy, so I'm just gonna drop to my knees for the push-up and then tuck my toes and lift for the reach. Oh, all right, we pulse. Find that push-up position, down an inch, up with the arms. Now, if possible, you're doing this at about your halfway point, but if that's too much, you can do it closer to the top of your push-up, okay? Elbows back, press, rest. 
All right, come down to your stomach. Final exercise in this circuit. So your arms are reaching forward. There will be some natural elevation of the shoulder blades, but just make sure that you're not scrunching and pulling the shoulders up to your ears, okay? Easier said than done. Lift, long extension, and lower. The lift is coming right from the base of your shoulder blades. So mid spine and upper spine, which is your neck, come into extension challenging us by having the arms overhead. It adds weight. Hold at the top. Swimmer. You're still engaged to the abdominal wall. Long neck and done. Awesome job. Okay, you have a minute to recover. I'm gonna show you what's coming up in our final little Tabata. Two exercises in our Tabata and we'll alternate between them. The first is a push press jumping jack. So we're gonna use one single weight. You press it out at chest height and then up overhead. Now, if you wanna keep this exercise low impact, you don't wanna jump, you can step one foot at a time out or you have another option. You could hold a low squat position for a little bit more of a lower body challenge and you would just press, press forward and then back in with that weight. So two different options. Second exercise is body weight. It is going to be a marching plank, alternating your lead arm. So you'll go right, left, right, left, then left, right, left, right. To modify that one, just do it with your knees down on the mat. 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest. We have eight intervals total. Let's do it. Push, press, jumping jacks to start. Grab that weight. Again, low impact, you can step. I'll have the modification playing somewhere on the screen. <laughs> Let's go. Make sure I don't take out my light bulbs and my ceiling fan as I do this. Rest, make your way down to the mat. March and clank coming up to modify, have your knees down, otherwise you're in a plank position. Lower down, forearm, forearm, straight arm, straight arm, switch your lead side. Rest. Jumping jacks coming up. Let's go. So the press forward is a little harder than the press up. So if you'd rather just press up overhead, that's another modification option. Rest. Weight goes down, marching plank. Stay active through your legs in this, okay? And don't pike your hips up to the ceiling. Your hips are coming down with the rest of your body. Trying to keep everything in line. Rest, okay, we're halfway there. Two minutes to go. Finishing class by just getting that heart rate up. Little sweaty finisher here. Let's go. Rest. Marching plank. 10 seconds is quick. It's really just enough time to transition up and down. Let's go. Try not to collapse into your shoulders as you do this. So always think about really pushing the mat away. Rest. Slowing down in those. Final set, let's do it. Rest. 
rest. <laughs> Final 20 second push, marching plank. We cool down after this. Make it a strong 20 seconds. Spread out through the fingers, press the mat away. As little rocking of the hips as possible. And rest. Send your hips back. Find a child's pose and just take a couple deep breaths. Now we're gonna come into a stretch for the backs of the arms, the triceps. So I want you to walk your forearms forward a little bit so your butt kind of comes up into the air. And then your forehead can be down on the mat. I want you to bend the elbows and then bring your palms towards your back. Or you can do a prayer position and press them down there, whatever feels best. And then play around until you feel that opening. So you might have to walk your elbows back and shift the hips back. Or sorry, walk the elbows forward and shift the hips back. A few breaths here. Straightening out the arms, let's press ourselves up to a tabletop position. Let's go for a little twist. So I want you to take your right elbow up to the ceiling, open twist, and then you're gonna thread this right arm under the left, bending that left elbow. Bring the side of your cheek down to the mat, and then take your left arm and walk it forward. And hold here. So you should feel sort of spreading across your mid back. With every inhale, think of expanding through the rib cage. When you're ready, walk your left hand in. Let's take one more counter twist. So right elbow goes back up to the ceiling again. Uh, and then replace the hand on the mat, same thing other side. Left elbow to the ceiling, twist open. And then thread left under right, bringing the cheek to the mat. Shift that bottom shoulder away from your ear and then your right arm can reach forward. A few deep breaths here. So I hope you enjoyed this class. If you did, I have another one focused on upper body available on Patreon, as well as one focused on lower body available on Patreon this month. When you're ready, walk that right hand in, press yourself up, one more counter twist, left elbow to the ceiling. And then put, put both hands down and let's just do a quick cat cow. So as you inhale, gaze shifts up, and as you exhale, round the spine up towards the ceiling. I know this is typically a warm up move, but after pretty much an entire class maintaining a neutral spine, it just feels nice to move it. One more. And then I want you to come through neutral. So we're gonna come into a stretch for the forearms. In tabletop, one hand at a time, I want you to flip so that the fingers point back towards your knees. Now, right like this might be a deep enough stretch. You might not have to move at all. If you wanna go a little deeper though, ever so slightly start to shift your hips back. Don't overdo it. This is a deep bend for the wrists. Once you find the point where you're feeling that nice opening through the forearms, just stay and breathe into it for a little bit. Any wrist pain though, I would skip this one. Maybe you can get a little farther back now that we've been in it for a bit. One final deep breath. And then you're gonna come forward and one at a time, flip your palms forward and let's come into a seated position getting off of our hands. So going with that theme of it just feeling good to move the spine after stabilizing it in neutral for so long, let's take a fluid side bend. So you're kind of tenting your fingertips out to the side. Take your right arm, sweep it up and over to the left coming into a side bend and then just fluidly take it up and over to the other side. Just continue moving like this. Let's do one more each side. And then 
we're going to come through the center. Let's take one final inhale and exhale together. As you inhale, arms are going to reach up overhead. And then as you exhale, release. And that is your class. Awesome work. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you did, I have more of these as well as a ton of other workout classes available on Patreon. On Patreon, it's still YouTube videos. They're just private YouTube videos and becoming a Patreon member allows you to access them. So that's kind of nice. It means you can do those workouts anywhere you can access YouTube, your smart TV, tablet, computer, iPhone, etc. All the information you need about that is at patreon.com slash Nicole Pierce. I post new workouts here for free on YouTube every Monday. If you like this class, be sure to give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I appreciate all your support so much and I'll see you guys next week.